the full slide presentation. Okay. That, that's better. That's better. Okay, so um, I have a lot of little windows in front of the main window. Okay, anyhow. So let's go. So um, I think the first few slides should. I, I don't have to discuss that too much, right? So we're going to, uh, going to talk about um, uh, freeform surface modeling today, as opposed to last time where we do, did regular uh, rule-based um, um, surface modeling. And the first example that I would like to discuss to show you the general uh, workflow is this vehicle body. And I've discussed that already. That is from a student project from a few years ago. So uh, if I wanted to do something like that, I, I would actually do uh, multiple uh, very simple surfaces and uh, merge them with each other. And each, each of the surfaces, as you can see, is, is curved in two directions. So there's, there's nothing flat here and nothing extruded and nothing rotated here. Almost all the individual surfaces are uh, made from boundary blend, right? So for a boundary blend, typically you could use four uh, edges. Each of the four edges would be curves, and they have to be connected at the ends, and then you can use the boundary blend function. And uh, so just, just to see the methodology, you can, you can see uh, some light blue curves here. Uh, maybe most interestingly, in the center plane, you will see one blue curve, uh, for the for the front screen for the front window, and you see one. Uh, can you also see my mouse? No, right? Uh, yes, we can see. It. Oh, you can see it, and you can see one long curve uh, for the for the roof line, and you see they they don't end at the same point. So the different uh, patches of surfaces they uh, will always um, basically beyond each other, right? Uh, and typically for the curvature of these curves, this is needed anyway. What is nice about this model here is that you see uh, light, well, it's not light blue, I, I, cyan or something, you see this greenish color, and then the gray colors, these are just fillets, roundings, and we'll discuss that in a second. So the main surfaces are, um, are made from these boundary blends. So, Let's look at the, at the uh, surface that makes the roof. Uh, these are these four, four curves. After we apply the boundary blend function to that, it will be shown as some sort of purplish blue. And uh, if we do that uh, to, the, uh, to the four lines that represent the front screen, you will see that. And then of course, as you already know, we can merge them. And in this case, the outer edge of the two surfaces is not identical, so you can actually see uh, this. It looks very ugly how these two meet, but this is not a problem because in real life, I would also model a multiple or, or a single side surface. If this vehicle body is open at the side, I would of course first model a side surface that would, that would be merged with these uh, top surfaces to, to define the size of that. Okay, so this would be, uh, sorry, this would be the point where I, uh, can I just share the window? I don't know, maybe new share, just change this. This would be the bit where I change to Creo. So now you should be able to see my Creo window. I will again select working directory, just a temp temp directory here and I will make a new file, uh, car body, um, well, not a real car body. Uh, so I will do something similar to what we just seen just so you get uh, used to the, to the uh, main fun function. Uh, the front surface that should be highlighted now, that will be the center surface of the vehicle and I will start with sketching uh, two lines that in the side view represent the roof and the front window. Okay, just estimated, but just for the for this purpose. So I click on that, and I'll use sketch. Sketch is very important now, and um, maybe I'll just 
you don't have to you don't have to do the wheels of course i'll just i'll just do two wheels only for the scale you don't have to do that again 1700 one wheel is i don't know maybe 150 oh, um and look what i'll also be doing i'd say these these lines are not real geometry but only construction then they will not uh confuse us later on so that will be uh the front wheel on the left side and the and the rear wheel on the right side and now i will just use only one spline for uh for the front window and you see what I use? I use this line button, and uh, and I'm using only two points, <coughs> a front, sorry, start and end point. Of course, it's possible to use more points, but I'm telling you, try to avoid that. Uh, the maximum number of points that really works well is three, right? Uh, so, and really, I only use three if it's symmetric curves, right? Uh, and we'll, we'll uh, look into that a little bit more. Now, how do I actually make this curve curved? Uh, there are, of course, if you have three points, it will be curved. Let me just show you a spline with three curves that could look like that. Of course, you could make more curves, but I'm trying you. Uh, I'm telling you, even if you can't do it, don't do it. Uh, if you if you start constructing surfaces with these complex curves, they will never turn out to be anything good. Okay. So again, I'm just using this. Now, how can we curve this? The best way to do this is, and I, I use that practically always, is to use tangents at the end. So I use the center line and I draw a center line through the end points of the curves. And now I declare uh, that the spline is tangent at its end to these curves. So just use the tangent constraint button, click on the spline, and then click on the curve. And now, of course, you can uh, edit the position of the endpoints. You can also edit the angle uh, of these, uh, these splines. This is really, and I'm, I'm not telling you this from a book, I'm telling you this from my own professional experience. This is really best and most, uh, uh, most stable way to do it, right? So at the moment, I can just uh, drag and drop this. Um, and maybe one button you haven't used yet is modify. Uh, this is to, to gradually modify uh, a value. That's, that's pretty cool to, um, to have sensitive access to, to curves because now you can really interactively change what it looks like, right? So I, I just this is good. Can't see because I have all these things in my view. This will be my first curve. Um, as you see now, you, you don't see the, the wheels in there because uh, because I, um, I used only construction wheels. So I'm now making a second sketch again in this view. And Second sketch will be the roof, or at least the roof in the, in the side view, because you might remember what I'm trying to do is I want to do uh, uh, surfaces that, that are curved in two directions. So basically, I'm basically uh, I need uh, to make a whole lot more sketches like that. So I just I just uh, I just act as if I'm happy with that. Now, I, I do the, um, maybe only the roof, and I do only one half of it. Um, although I can, of course, I can, of, yeah, let's do only one half of it. I'll do both. So I'll do only one half of this roof, but, and I want to sketch the, the sideline. I need a second plane, right? So I'll make a plane, and I'll offset that. Let's say maybe uh, 350 millimeters. And here, of course, I can sketch a second curve, which will be similar to the, to the first one, but it will go down a little. It will be, it will be a little lower. And, 
it can it can have different angles too. What what I'll actually do is I'll make sure that this is the the two front end are below each other. So I don't have so many degrees of freedom. Center lines. Uh, 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 uh. Tangency. Okay, that looks pretty cool. And now the, the next problem will be how can I actually make the, the end curves? Uh, so you, you want, you can sketch them for example, and this is what I'll do now. So I, will, I want to have a, a sketching plane that, that is, gives me a new, a new um, curve that is starting at this end point and ending at this one. So my next plane, will go through these points. And with the control button, I click these two points. And then still with the control button down, I click this plane and I'll say, well, it has to be parallel to this plane. Okay, so now I have a plane and now I can go into sketch. And again, what you have to do is you'll have to select these two endpoints as reference points. So you need these as reference to look. You need this button uh, on the left. It will look uh, slightly different in your software, but it is the sketch references. I'm using my commercial license because if somebody else sees the recordings, I'm not allowed to use an educational version of teaching. <laughs> A bit silly, but it's true. So now, uh, again, I, you can see these two curves are selected as references, and now I can, again, click uh, sketch a spline. I'm now I'm just switching off the uh, plane because they're kind of confusing. And again, I should uh, now define the tangency at the end. Of course, for the the one that ends in the center plane, it must be horizontal. Otherwise, you cannot have a symmetrical one. And uh, and it does work. Now I'm telling you already, sometimes uh, these, um, these clients can be a bit uh, nasty. Uh, sometimes they just don't do what you want to. For example, if you, if you try to draw the tangency center lines first, it will not work. So really, uh, always first draw the spline, then uh, draw the lines that will be the center lines. Okay, so uh, I have what's that? Uh, so this sketch is finished. Now I'll do the same thing to the end, but I'll do it slightly different because I will now define the plane, what they call on the fly. I will first uh, start the sketch, and then see it's asking for the plane, and I don't click on the plane yet. Um, on a plane, instead I click on the create plane button. So I'm, I'm basically, I'm creating the plane while I'm already doing the sketch. They call that on the fly. And you'll see in the model tree later on that this looks slightly different. Now again, I'm clicking on this one, I'm clicking on that one. Uh, sorry, I'm activating plane display. I click on this and again, it has to be parallel. It doesn't need to be like that. That's just currently how uh, I, I think it's most convenient. So again, I'm switching off the planes because I find them confusing. I will again activate the references and uh, select these two points. And now I can draw a line and uh, again center lines. I go into sketch. So, uh, last time, tangency, one, two, three, four. Okay, now this doesn't look very nice. See, see at the end, if you zoom really in, it looks too kind of flat. So, I think I have to modify the angle of the end. Okay, so I'm going to 
the curve. So I'm, I'm making it a bit flatter here, right? The good thing is uh, because we have we have all these um, four lines, we have them as separate sketches, we can really change them later on, right? If we're not happy with the result. So I'm, even if I'm in shaded mode, right? You don't see any shaded surfaces because there are no surfaces yet. I now have to define a surface between Love it. Ah, they just removed my 40 minute time limit. That's cool. <laughs> so, um, so boundary blend, this is this function. It, it works like this. You have two directions. Uh, and the uh, best is to open this menu here. Direction one or first direction, second direction. And uh, in each of this, you will select uh, as many curves in that direction as you have. Now I have two curves in the first direction. You see, they have the little marker one and two. This is the one and two in this, but they first belong to the first direction. Now, if I only select these two, it will more or less make a surface that is a linear between those, right? Um, so you can actually make a boundary blend with only two lines, but of course it's not curved in two directions. So in our case, you now activate the second direction window, and then again, you select these two. And keep in mind, you have to keep the control button down. So now you see we have four curves together. They create a surface. And if I finish this um, command now, then uh, you see this beautiful, complexly curved surface. And uh, just by the way, if I want to mirror that already, it's pretty easy. To Click on it, and then here's the mirroring up here. You just need to select the mirroring plane. And then you will see that it really looks like one smooth thing. This would be the roof. And of course, uh, if you remember the first lesson, uh, you remember how in, in the wireframe mode, you will have uh, the yellow lines representing open edges. Now here it's a bit confusing because you have yellow and blue. Blue is the the, uh, the sketch that we made and yellow is the edge of the surface. They should be in the same place and they are in the same place exactly. Here on my screen it looks slightly different. You can, you can see that this blue line and the yellow line, they, they look like they're slightly different but that's only because my graphic accelerator is being lazy, right? So that's really only a simplification of computer work. I can now select these two surfaces, and I can merge them if I want to. And now, uh, now this one shouldn't be purple up there, but it won't. And now you can see that here, we have a purple line in the middle, which is the now merged closed edge between now, I think this, this is already quite a lot, uh, but now we have an unlimited meeting. I invite you to try uh, to do something like this. Um, again, you, you could use the same example, just, just basically um, make only the roof of, of my little vehicle here, uh, or something like it. Uh, draw a curve in the center plane first, then create a parallel offset plane, draw a second curve, which is a bit lower, and then make two more sketches. Uh, each of the planes must go through the endpoints of the first curves, and then uh, draw two more or make two more of these curves, and then merge these four curves to be a surface. This would be the first exercise for now. And I'll, I'll just hang on here in the meeting, and uh, I think if, <laughs> now that's gonna be difficult, if something Okay, so, so now, now comes the bit where, where it gets a bit more complicated. Okay, so far we've just been playing. We just understand how we can make curved surfaces in space. But now, uh, now we get a, a bit methodology about that. Sorry, I'll just mute your microphones. Um, and we'll do it with a very popular example. Uh, so this... This is an old iPad, I think. Um, there you go. Uh, so this, when this 
thing came out together with iPhones and other stuff from Apple. This were really the only uh, products that that a lot of people looked at that were celebrating high quality surfaces, right? Um, and so Apple really made a point out of small things, and and the and the the one thing I would I would like to point out here is is the corner, the four corners of that. Now, usually engineers they see that they think, okay, it's a, it's a round, it's a fillet, constant radius, right? This is what you would think, but it's not. This this corner is not a round corner with a constant radius as you would normally uh, use in CAD. Instead, it is a a curve that has a varying curvature so basically its its radius is changing over its length and actually when it starts the curvature is zero when this curve bit starts at the end it is completely flat so to speak and then the curvature value changes and changes and then changes back to be zero now what am i talking about what does it mean uh, so we'll, we'll talk about this right now. And this is basically uh, the magic of good-looking surfaces it can be described by very simple mathematical criteria. And we call these criteria uh, um, continuity, basically. So what you see here is four different levels of con continuity of geometry. And you basically know all this. You know it from math. Uh, not even undergraduate math that, that school be, should be school math. Um, so, so basically, we're talking about uh, something that you know as mathematical graphs. And you have uh, f as a function of x. Uh, so you have a, a diagram with y coordinates, x coordinates, and then you see the graph. Let's imagine we're talking about graphs, because really we are talking about graphs graphs that we use to make a geometry, maybe a car body, right? So, so when you discuss these curves, the original function normally has no breaks at all, right? It is a continuous function. And if this is the case, we say this is G0, it's position continuous, continuous. There are no breaks in that curve. Now, I hope you all remember you can uh, uh, um, derive this function, right? Uh, and I, and I'm sorry, because I never learned math and English, my, my English is a bit weak here, how you would exactly say that. In Germany, you would say the first derivation of, of this function, uh, or it would be uh, uh, d, uh, dy divided by dx. So it's basically the first derivation. I hope you, you know what I'm talking about, right? So that would give us a new function that describes the uh, angle, the, the tangency angle of the original function, right? So let's say if the original function was a linear function, right? Then the first derivation would be a horizontal line because the original linear function has the same tangency angle throughout, right? So this, if this was the original function, the first derivation would be a horizontal line and the y value of this horizontal line would represent the inclination of the original function, right? So that function, that would be uh, one, the, the, the incline of that would be one because it's 45 degrees. So the first, uh, first derivation would be at the value number one. And it would also be continuous, right? Uh, there would be no breaks, no kinks in there, right? But then if, if I would take this function again, uh, the, the first derivation and do a derivation again, that would be the second derivation of the original function, it would just be zero, right? Because, of course, the inclination of the second, of, of this is zero. And that means the second derivation, it represents the curvature of the original function, okay? You should still remember that from school. Um, now, the criterion for good aesthetics, so to speak, is that this second derivation has no kinks, no jumps. And this is something you maybe never thought about. What kind of 
uh, what, how is that relevant to shape? And actually, uh, a typical engineering surface set always has these jumps in curvature. So the example is this. Imagine you have, you model a cube, right? Very simple cube. You have three sets of parallel surfaces, a cube. We have a lot of edges. Now what engineers do is they want to make this more, more pretty. They just put a radius on the edges. Now, if you analyze uh, the continuity of this new set of surfaces, you would, would look at the curvature going from one flat surface into the next flat surface over the radius. And you know what? It is not G2 continuous because the curvature changes rapidly. We would, uh, we would go over the flat bit first so the curvature is zero, 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 zero. Then we reach the radius, and then the curvature is one divided by the radius, because this is how curvature is defined. It's Kerbert. It's it's one divided by the radius. So if the radius is ten, the curvature would be zero point one. Okay. So again, the the curvature, if I analyze that over the run over the surface would be zero, then I come to the fillet, to the, it would jump up to 0 0.1. I, I drive over the fillet, come back to the next surface, and it would jump back to zero because the curvature of the flat surfaces are zero. So that would not be G2 continuous. But this is what Apple is doing with their design. Instead of a ra this fillet with a constant radius, they have a special fillet which doesn't use the, the same radius throughout, but it starts with the radius zero, and then it maximizes to a maximum radius and goes back to, uh, to the same curvature of, of zero again. And if I now analyze the curvature over this run, it would be a continuous uh, a change of value. So my, if I show that as a graph, it should again start with zero, would then continuously go up and down again, back to zero. And this is what basically, if you, if you design surfaces, freeform surfaces, this is what you strive for. You want to have uh, a smooth change of curvature rating, no matter how you cut the surface. And why is that so? That is so because it simply looks better. It, uh, Actually, when you look at surfaces, you can only see them because they reflect light, of course. And it's basically the smoothness of light reflection that gives us a sense of beauty. Okay? It's, it's a bit of a complex discussion, but really make yourself aware of this is really what you're looking at. You're looking at the reflection of the light. And if you have like a bumpy reflection or a sharp, shiny uh, uh, reflex, then uh, it will not be pleasing to the eye, unless, of course, I want to do that for some, for some reason, right? But typically, all the car bodies out there, they are at least G2 continuous. Now, I have I've not mentioned G, G3 continuity. Now, um, of course, you, you can make that even more complex. You can say, well, I'm only happy if I have G3 continuity, so the, continu uh, the change rate of the curvature is also continuous. But that's that's a bit over, so to speak, right? So we, we don't we don't really need to go that far, right? So we are already happy with G two continuity. So I, I've I've done that with my hands now. I hope you explained the, the example of how a normal fillet rounding doesn't do the job when I round off the edges between two flat surfaces. And I'll, I'll show you that, that Creo actually can do that. You can actually choose a fillet rounding that is uh, G continuous. Okay, so um, first let's go back to this example. You, could, you see that I've modeled these two surfaces, and of course they, they meet in an edge. This edge is now G0 continuous. It's already not G1 continuous because even at this point where the two surfaces meet, the angle jumps from one value to the next one. And what we want to have is we want to have a G2 continuous transition. So again, it's like this gray little surface that you see here. But of course, we're, 
uh, engineers again would just use radios and we don't do that instead what we do is we uh, use special radios and i will not show that to you in creo because i can show that with just a screenshot you would you would actually go into the normal fillet menu that you would use for a radius and you see up here uh why is just talking talking um so uh normally up here you would find uh i don't know actually what it's called it's called either constant radius or ball or something uh and and then you, you just select two continuous which is far more complex math the software has to calculate the shape of that surface and it needs quite a lot of bit of quite a bit of power to do that because it's not just one line between two strains but it's of course a change between those two surfaces and these surfaces have a changing curvature as well so uh 10 years ago creo couldn't do that right uh, maybe maybe even five years ago i think it's about 10 years ago this software didn't have this function. It came later on. I'm, and I'm very happy about this. I was very happy about this. But I've been doing um, reform surfacing uh, since the year 2000 uh, to, to make a part of my income. And it was terribly painful at the time to, to model high quality surfaces. I mean, the, uh, the boundary blend, what I showed to you already, that was always available, no problem. But if I had to make uh, the transition, for example, between two of those, I would have to construct this surface, this fillet, what you see here as a fillet, I would have to do that manually with another four uh, lines, right? So, uh, so this is extremely useful and it doesn't always work. You, um, when you start fumbling with it, you will see that sometimes it just doesn't work. You use a function, you tell it, well, I want this to be two continuous. Actually, in my slide before, I called it G2, but that's the same. Creo just calls it G2 continuous. Sometimes you will see either G or C. It's, it's okay. And again, uh, don't be don't be too surprised. Sometimes your modeling simply doesn't work, right? Okay. Anyhow, so that uh, that will be. The next thing that you try out uh, when you play around with it, you do these two surfaces, you intersect them with each other, and then you just play around with, with a fillet with a round function, but instead of a normal round, you uh, play around with the C2 option. And you will see, sorry, I forgot that. You will see there's actually one more parameter here, uh, and it, it, doesn't even, it doesn't even give you a name. Uh, that would be, you know what? At the moment, I don't even know what it is called, but it means it means how much the middle of this fillet is pulled out. Uh, I, I'll show I'll show that to you in a second, but I will first demonstrate it to you at, at this example. Here. So we're talking about this curve uh, and this parameter that is at the moment set to 0 0.5. If I change this to 0 0.6, then that means that that this this edge, this corner is pulled out a bit more, right? So you can, you can play with that um, when, when you're trying it out for the first time. Okay, so now um, let's look at curves again. Now, at the moment, we're looking at a sketch again, right? So this, this would be uh, my try of sketching this corner in a sketch, in a regular sketch. Uh, and later on, we'll see that the sketch is not the best way to do it, um, but we'll try it first anyway. So what you'll see is um, this rather flat sketch here is just the same line that we used before, the curve, and it's only a two-point slide. So I click the two ends and I made them tangent to the existing brown lines that you see there. And what you, the result is a curve that in this case is pretty flat in the middle. You see how flat it is here. It looks like my eye had already dropped to the floor and hit the corner. So it's not very pretty, it's just too flat. So um, if you want to control that, you will use a three point 
spline. So the, the, the other blue line you see here is a spline that, that I sketched with three points. So I clicked at one end, then clicked in the middle, and then clicked the other end. And again, the two ends will get a tangent line. But what I did then is I constructed a diagonal center line. And to do that, I drew a point here. And I made that vertical under this endpoint. And I made it on the same horizontal at this point. And I also uh, draw another circle line through this point zero and through the intersection of the other two. So that just gives me a diagonal. And then I can put in a uh, dimension to control where this point is. So just by changing this dimension, and again, I would use this gradual change slider in, in, the, uh, in the sketcher, I can kind of pull the corner out a bit very carefully or push it in. So this is not a mathematical way to do it, but this is like a way how you could say, well, this is how I like it. This looks exactly like Apple now, or this looks a bit more pointy. And, um, and I can actually be sure that this spline that I'm sketching is G1 continuous at the ends, but you know what? I can't be sure it is actually G2 continuous. And this in Creole, in the sketch mode, you cannot, you cannot tell it to make the spline G2 continuous at its end to something else. It's simply, it's not there. It's not there. It can't do it. Stupid. Uh, mathematically, it should be able, it should be possible to program Creo so it can do it, but they never did it. Uh, maybe that, that comes, maybe that's in the newest Creo version already. I read Creo 7 is there already or something. I haven't checked it out yet, but I kind of believe they will not do that because the sketch software is super old. Now, this is my own theory, right? Uh, I believe they, they are not touching their own sketch engine because they don't know it anymore. It's, it's, it's an old piece of software and they don't know how to change that. Just my own uh, uh, theory about why this is not changing. But this is not important to know. So, uh, by the way, this could be a, a nice um, assignment for your exam is to give me the graph of the curvature of these two different um, curves, starting from A to B to C to D. And this is interesting because if you look at A, of course the curvature between the points small a, small b is zero, and then it starts, but then uh, the curvature is, is, has a higher value first, and in the middle of that curve where it looks kind of flat, the curvature drops down, goes up again, goes to zero. That would be a nice uh, problem for your exam theory, right? Um, so here you go. Uh, this is actually the solution to that problem. Uh, without the bits A, B, and C, D, this is only the center curve. And you see the fat one is, is uh, marked as a fat red one. It's the first one I drew. And if I show if I let Creo show me the curvature, it can do that. You, uh, it is, this function is included. You will see the curvature starts at zero. So actually, it is already pretty good. Curvature continues to the end. It starts at zero, goes up to a maximum, then drops down again, goes up again, and so on. This is what, what we can see visually. This is what I described when I said, well, it looks kind of flat in the middle. And, and this graph shows exactly this, that the curve is kind of flat in the middle. Now, if I show the curvature of the other one, uh, you will see that the graph just goes up to a maximum curvature and goes down again. This is exactly what I intended. I wanted the curvature in the middle of the graph to be the highest and then gradually go down to the curvature zero to meet the two straight lines. Okay? So I, I believe uh, this is kind of, it's actually pretty easy to understand because you have a mathematical background. So let's look at, I'm wondering, 
yeah, I, I I do have an iPad, and this is not as old as the as the first generation one that I've showed to you. This is uh, maybe fourth generation. It's it's already also eight or ten years old already, right? So this is a completely different design. For for Apple, actually, they just played around with how simple they can make a geometry, but they they always have these wicked roundings. The very first tablet they did had this had this uh, bulbous uh, balloon-like back surface. Let's go to that <laughs> side view. Actually, I'm not sure. I think. Oops, sorry. I think it is flat in the middle, or it's almost flat, and then it runs out here now. As far as I remember, this is not really flat. It's like it's like it's under pressure. So the whole thing is, is curved, even in the middle. Now, the later generation of the tablets, they realized uh, that might be a cool idea, but it's really hard to make it so it really looks cool when it's really made. So they went back to, or maybe just the fashion change. I'm not sure. I, Maybe it was just fashion. They went back to make it completely flat. Same with the old iPhone. Uh, they they always change between a flat back and and the curved back. And now uh, the other makers like Oppo and Samsung, whatever, they they also kind of go between flat surfaces and curved surfaces. Anyhow, with this this tablet, uh, the back is completely flat. And of course, the corner radius is much smaller, but it's still the same thing. I have no idea if you can see that, right? Still the same idea. But what they have is they have the rounded edge here along the, along the long edges, and then uh, they have this radius. So the resulting thing is like a, similar to a ball, to a eighth of a ball, but of course the radius is not continuous. So this, this corner is what we're looking at now. This is uh, basically the next uh, exercise that we're that we're drawing, and it's wicked. Uh, it's it's not easy. So it, this will be your assignment to hand in. So the, this 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 vehicle thing is just an exercise to warm up. And now the I want to talk you through the methodology of um, of this one. Now I think before we make this jump. I, I would like to I give you a chance to comment if I can find the menu again. Hello, meeting controls, where are you? Are you still there? How can I get my control? Uh, I hope you're still there. Meeting controls. Maybe up here. Ah, I'm there. Manage participants. Wait a minute. So I can I can see you. I will unmute you all now. Are there are there any comments or questions you want to make now? Can you further clarify what the assignment is? I heard you, but I didn't understand you. Can you say that slowly again? Uh, can you clarify what the assignment is? What do we have to submit? The assignment is that you model a an iPad. That will be the assignment. Model an iPad. And I will now show to you um, how to do that. The most complicated thing of the iPad will be these four corners. So the iPad that I'm talking about is, is like this. It's completely flat on the front. This is the glass. Okay. And this one, uh, this specific one that we're doing is also flat on the back, but not the, the entire back because we have these curved edges and resulting we have these curved corners too. And ideally this must be all G2 continuous, ideally. And that is not easy, but I'll be talking to you Okay. Okay. Anyone else? 
Anything else? Is there anything you didn't understand up to here? No? Great. So, uh, are you ready for, for me to continue? Shall I continue? Yes. Uh, maybe, maybe just everybody give me a, a quick... Uh, 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 where is the chat? Yeah, you can continue. Yeah, well, I wanted I wanted to get a, a, a quick chat back from everybody, but the chat window. Yeah, here it is. So everybody, give me give me one word. Just want to make sure you're still awake. Kanapur is ready. Look from Hasi, yeah, from Austin. Bring Papa, yeah. It's just good fun is missing. Come on, Fulfon. Tell me you're still alive. Okay, great. Is that all? One, two, three, four, five. I think so. Uh, yeah, great. Okay, wonderful. So I'll, I'll continue now. Just finishing my cold coffee. Um, they don't allow to bring your own stuff anymore, right? Uh, because that might spread the virus. So now let's go back to disposable paper cups. Okay, I'm trying to go back to share mode. Are you seeing that same slide? Okay. Uh, I, I should actually switch off your microphones again. Manage participants, everybody. Yes. So, um, basically, the only problem with this iPad, or the only challenge, is the four corners, right? And of course, they're all the same, so they can be mirrored two times. So really, we're talking only about this corner for the whole iPad. It's only the corner that is the problem. Um, but of course, the corner is continuing into these two long edges. And you should now understand already that we want the transition from the corner to these straight or extruded edges. It has to be G2 continuous. Yeah. So how can we achieve that? So um, to achieve that, you have to follow a strategy for the whole geometry. You can't just do one bit and then do the other bit and then hope to somehow kind of make the G2 continuous into each other. So just from the logic, you can only de declare G2 continuity to something that is already there. Okay. But what I will do now is I will first model it for you. I will model it falsely. Okay. So you understand how it doesn't work. And I will I just remind you how to sketch these corner curves that are shown to you already. Okay, so I will first do it in a way that, that will not completely work. It will look pretty good, but it will not work completely. And then I will continue to change my approach until it, it is possible to make it G2 continuous. Okay. Uh, hang on. Oh. What, what would you say? So, so normally, uh, if, if you're a beginner, uh, you would, would understand that the surface A is the biggest problem. So you, you would probably start with surface A. And then your idea would be, okay, I have the edges already, the two side edges. So I just need to extrude them to make surface B and C. And that, yes, that seems very reasonable as a strategy, first to make surface A and then just extrude B and C. But it will not completely work. It will not allow you to define G2 continuity. So as, as you will later see, it is a better strategy to uh, make the surfaces B and C first, because then if you make the surface A at, as the last, you can say uh, that A has to be G2 continuous to, a, to B and C. And I'll show you how to do that. Um, also what I'll show uh, is, one 
visualizing tool, which is extremely helpful. Uh, I sometimes, I call it the zebra tool. I think uh, Creo calls it reflection for, for surface analysis reflection. What it does is it, it kind of mirrors a pattern of black and white lines onto your surface. And if you move the surface, you can see these black and white lines move like a light reflection move over your surface. And every time if you have a break between two surfaces, which is not G2 continuous, then these reflective lines will actually have a kink. And you see that here in this, in this slide, is uh, that the, let's say the black line, for example, coming from here, it breaks, it, it kind of really kinks off in, into this. And that is a visual indicator for the lack of G2 continuity. It is G1 continuous. We have tangency, but not G2 continuous. And the, the difference between G1 and G2 continuous on, on an actual surface, the naked eye can only see if, if you're kind of trained, if you really have exercise in, in, uh, in analyzing the quality of surface. But on the screen, it's very hard because you, the screen is lying to you anyway. That there, there is math uh, driving your graphics chip, and so you can't trust it. But with this tool, it has to show you the real thing. Now, it actually, this tool, this, this reflection thing with the black and white stripes, this actually comes from real life. This used to be not a virtual tool, but an actual tool that was, uh, that was used by car body makers. Now car bodies, in the olden days, they were made by people using their hands. Uh, because actually to make a, a car body is, is like sculpting, right? So hundreds and thousands of years ago, people would make sculptures from clay, right? Now a car body is the same thing, it's a sculpture just that it's made from sheet metal. And you don't, don't just smooth it out with your hands, instead you use a hammer and uh, maybe soft metal parts like copper or, or lead and maybe wooden parts, and you just hammer it until it is smooth. And actually smoothness is G2 continuous too. So imagine how would they actually, after hours of banging on a piece of sheet metal, how could they actually make sure it looked good because their eyes were tired already and maybe it was dark already so they can't take it outside into the sunlight. So what they would do is they would have a, an actual mirror and they would mask it off in stripes. So they would just use like a masking tape. And so this mirror would now reflect black and white lines. Or actually it would reflect, of course, light and then no light, light, no light. And this so they would use this mirror indirectly to reflect light onto the car body they were repairing or making and move the mirror so they could see the black and white lines, the reflection w walking over the, the part that they were working on. This tool well, that Creo has now is actually a simulation of real life visual help to analyze the quality of car body or actually any surface, it could be a clay, model too, or it could be a wood model, but of course uh, the reflection behavior of clay and wood is a lot different actually. Actually it's easier to see than on shiny metal. This is especially made for shiny metal. We'll look at that and we'll, we'll look at different strategies to do that. We, as you will see here is that actually I, I do manage by a, straight, a better strategy, I manage later on to, to do just that. Uh, to have the same corner look it, it looks almost the same well it looks the same but it's now you can see from the from the zebra from these black and white uh, reflected lines you see that now it is g2 continuous now why do i say g1 g2 continuous because i still have this little problem i can't make it fully, fully g2 continuous towards the flat surface so the G2 continuity between this and that, I manage that pretty well, but between this and the flat one, still not fully possible, but good enough. So this is 
And the fun, the weird thing is, now this is kind of really sensitive, Creo is sensitive about that, sometimes it doesn't even work. Uh, that shouldn't be the case with software, but uh, actually with Creo it can be a matter of if you're currently using it in battery mode or uh, on mains, because it's all about computing power. So here you see, uh, here you see I put the flat surface on the back, and here you can see that this reflection actually kinks off into the curve bit. So uh, this is still a problem. Uh, and I, I can't identify a strategy, but I do, I can, but I, we will not discuss that today because it's really complicated to have the G2 continuity into the uh, flat surface. Okay, so here we go. Wait, this should be the end of the presentation. Uh, well, it, it is actually, but I, this is what I'll demonstrate too now is actually um, uh, using. Uh, using a, a middle parameter, as I demonstrated before, to kind of manually pull out, manually control how these curves on the corner, what they look like. You see this dimension 32, see this dimension 12. This is basically this diagonal position that I've talked about before. Okay. Uh, so let's talk about this, and I and I even give you instructions for that in the presentation. Actually, I'm not sure if I already gave you. Presentation uh, online as a PDF, uh, but uh, you will get it, of course. So, is that the boom, 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 boom. yeah? So this will give you the the actual good way to do it. But I'll first demonstrate a uh, an approach that that is not completely workable. So we can go through the learning experience. Uh, can Wait, I think I have to stop the share. Go back to this. Bam. Do you now see? I hope you now now see my Creo again. I believe so. Uh, unless you don't protest. So I'll, I'll start a new model. File. New. I'm going to call this iPad. Um, so again, the iPad has four corners, so I, I just need to model one and, and I can mirror it two times. So um, I will uh, start with this, start with the edges that, is, that give me the geometry of this corner and also the geometry of the curved edges on the back side. So I will actually put the back side of the iPad on the top. Uh, and what I will do first is I, I kind of have to define how how large my iPad has to be. And I, I will not do that one because here the corners are too small. I will do one with 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 larger corners. So I just estimate, I just make a little sketch here. Estimate, that's what I'm doing. Uh, I'll show you again. And I, I just say, okay, maybe this thing is, how long is this? 250. And how wide is it? 150. Too lazy to, to read it. I mentioned. And I want the corners to be a bit larger, maybe 20. Right. So this is 20 by 20. This is what I'm doing now. Just my sketch thing is I'm assuming my iPad is 250 by 150 and the corners are 20 by 20. And the thickness, uh, maybe eight millimeters. Eight millimeters. You don't have to do the same. But I just want to make this plan so I can I can actually plan the position of my of my sketching uh, uh, sketching plane. Um, Okay, so what will I start with? Uh, so actually, in, in the top view and bottom view, I have no idea if my camera can do this, I have these, the inner and the outer uh, curve. 
right? Um, and I'm, what I will actually do is, I believe I will first sketch the uh, the edges. Maybe I should go back to the uh, to the other presentation. Hang on, works pretty well here. So I just go back to the presentation. Oh, hang on. That one. So I hope you see the screen now. So I will I will do this line first and then this line. And then after that I will do the two uh, lines that are shown green here, okay? So um, going back, ah, sorry, going back to this one. But if I said that the iPad will be 250 by 150, and the corners take 20 of that, then that is half of 250 divided by 2. 125 minus 20 is 105. So I'll offset this by 105 millimeters. So this is my sketching plane for one of these curves. So I do a sketch here. So the plane that is called top actually will be the screen of my iPad, but it's facing down. And um, the curve that I'm now drawing Um, will have a length of 20 millimeters and actually I, I will I will not have the end of that go down in a vertical line but I'll, I'll allow a little angle something like a draft angle maybe three degrees I'll call that three degrees this is horizontal and I'll make this, of course, tangent. And I, here's the 20, mil, uh, 20 millimeters that I've mentioned. I'll put them here. 20, and I said it's 8 thick. I hope that makes sense. Looks pretty good. So here, here it is. And now this dimension, I have to calculate again, that will be half of the width, 150 wide, so 75. Minus twenty. Well, actually, I can I can declare this to be seventy-five. Bam. Okay. I have one curve here. Great. In space. Beautiful. I did a miss. Uh, it's not completely right. Now, uh, you remember the two green curves I showed to you? So the, there is also an inner curve. It also has a length. I actually have to duck that a bit. Uh, let's say that will be five by five. So just changing that now. You see, seems a bit chaotic, but. Um, That is a creative process, right? There you go. So now I'll do the same curve, but in in the perpendicular plane. And uh, I'm wondering, yeah, that I should should be able to calculate that. Again, that should be 75 minus 20. That should be 55. So this one. 55. Looks good. See, they're not meeting because this is a five millimeter in a fillet. So I'm, I'm doing a sketch in here. Basically, doing the same thing. Yeah, I could copy that. 
but that actually the copy operation is kind of difficult. So, um, again, I'm doing my dual center lines as te tangents. And I'll also be, I'm choosing that endpoint as a reference. I can uh, put my line onto that reference point, saving one dimension. Angle of 90 degrees. And then I said, no, this is going to be 15. And this gonna be divided by two five. Something went wrong here. Oh sorry, that should be one twenty five. Now I hope you recognize them. These are my two curves. If I switch off plane you can see you already you can already imagine how this is going to be the corner. Okay. Now, the next step will have a logical error in it. I will do something wrong now, but, uh, but this is important that you try to follow me through this error. I will now sketch the two actual corner geometries that you see from the front view or the back view. So if you look at the back view, I will, I will draw this one. I will also draw the one that is on the back this curve here that you can't see clearly here, but I hope you can I will sketch that because it's a good exercise. Okay, so I'll start with this one. I want to do a sketch here and I need um, I will need uh, the endpoints as reference. I uh, I only want the point, and I want this point. Okay, so I will do a, a number of mistakes here so you see how this is difficult. If, if I just draw the spline here, and I will draw the center line. Sorry, this is a bit confusing. I'm drawing in 3D space. Trust me, this is not going to be good. So this is the corner that I mentioned already. Uh, it's a nice climb, but it kind of looks bad. It's flat in the middle. So, so you can't repair that. If, if you try to, to put one more point here, it, it will not, drag and drop doesn't work. If I put a point on this one, see, I, I can't even, doesn't even snap on. It doesn't work, right? So now, now I'll show you the next thing that will go wrong. I can't worry about this, but if you just do three points, this and that, uh, and if you now try to declare the tangency, oh, it works. That's a surprise. Sometimes that doesn't work. Okay, great. So now comes the next thing. I want to do my diagonal helping line, so I will draw a point. Here, I will make this vertical that and align this horizontally, this that. And now I will draw a center line. This and doesn't work. Wait, hang on. Um, so I need to draw this point at the intersection, draw a center line. And then I try to align. This node, you see the extra node here, try to align this here, and it works. And now I will draw, uh, not draw, but make this dimension. And the cool thing is with this dimension, I can modify, and I can now change this, right? I can change it from really weird inside to kind of too much outside. Looks nasty. See that 
curve always goes out. This, this will be bad design, right? So what I want to do is I want to kind of push it out. At the same time, I want to make sure that my curve never skips outside of these tangent lines. But I just, that it kind of okay, I guess. I'm very happy. I have three curves already. Now I still need to do this curve up here. I need a plane for that. I have the plane. Somebody just comment. Yeah, I had a weird window again. But what I need is I have to do a new plane going to this point and that point, and it should be parallel to this one, not normal, but parallel. This can be my new sketch plane. Uh, and again, I need to select this point as reference and that point. Now I will take a shortcut, uh, not a shortcut, but I will not do all these extra mistakes just go straight ahead. I need a point here, and a point there. I will make, I will align them horizontally and vertically. That, that. Now I can put my center line on. I can draw my line. One, two, three. I need more center lines for the end tangent. That, that is working, that is great. And now finally, again, put my little dimension here. And this is kind of tricky to place the dimension with the middle mouse, because uh, it really is this it's direct dimension. I would modify it a bit kind of cool. Okay. Whatever. Something like this. So now I have these four curves in space. And I just do it as as you would probably do without any instructions. I will do a boundary blend. Have this menu, this will be direction one. So it just does a straight connection. I want to have second direction though. So this will be cool. Looks kind of cool. I'm happy. Right? Not bad. And also what I what I'll do is just I, I do it quickly. I say, well, the next thing is I do I just extrude the surface, extrude the surface. And I just do that, that one, just click on the very easy, and you just say, how long? Well, just put it until here, bam, finish, yay. Same here, extrude, surface, this edge, toggle direction, do it until here. Wow. Okay. So... Looks pretty cool, right? Looks like I'm done already. So what I'll do is um, I just merge these guys. I can all merge them in one step. Okay. And just check if the merging really worked. Check the color of the closed edges and they are purple now. This and this, that means the three surfaces are like one quilt now. And what I can do now is uh, just switch off all the confusing things. I will now do the analysis uh, with this stripey thing. You will find. I hope. I hope I can find it under analysis. Somewhere should be surface. Uh, back geometry. Curvature. It's not that. Come on. Come on, where is it? 
haven't haven't used it for a while, and it's it's different in your menu anyway. So where is it? Uh, geometry report? Ah, uh, this is section. Come on, where did I put it? Uh, I didn't put it anyway. It's It's somewhere here. You know what? Maybe. Uh, no. As as this, but I don't want this. This one would give me a color value. I always have this problem every time that I somehow I can't find this thing because it's hidden somewhere where I don't expect it. Uh, called something like Every time, every time I have this problem. Think, uh, and I know I look very stupid now, I'm sorry about this. Uh, but I like I like to section that I'm getting weird things here from Uh, from Zoom, sorry. Hang on, I still haven't found it. Uh, tolerance, balance, curvature, mesh. That is so. Model report, custom. I think it's in analysis. Oh wait, it's stupid Alex. Yeah, I always do the same thing. Uh, so okay, it's back geometry. Now I see what I'm doing. This is where it is. Reflection. See me. Okay, so what you have to do is um, mark all the surfaces that go together. And so what you see here is as I move it. Imagine that. This is light reflected. It is really intuitive now. And what you will also see is uh, that it, it's not good. You see that the black lines are broken. They, they're, even, they're even offset, right? So when they're offset, that means it's not even G1 continuous. It's even worse than not G2 continuous. It's not good. Where it is point. But I'm not surprised really because I never declared it to be uh, continuous in any way. So how do I do it? Well, actually, we, we try uh, to use one function that I ignored before, which is uh, that actually, if when you're defining, oh sorry, I'm not. I don't want to define this. I want to redefine the boundary. Plan. <laughs> While you're defining the boundary blend, you see these funny bubbles here at the edges. So actually, uh, uh, I can only do something at the two green bubbles now. Actually, to, I can achieve G1 continuity. Okay. Uh, in my model tree, the two extended services, they come later. So I can't reference them, but I can trick it a bit. If I show the plane, I can actually say that this surface at this edge should be normal to the datum plane. Then that will result in G1 continuity. Look here, I can do free tangent normal curvature. Curvature is what we want, but there's nothing that we can reference it to curvature. The best thing I can do is to do normal, and it's 
you see this little bubble here, it changed. It now already shows this corner. So it automatically realized I want to do it normal to the datum plane. So I do the same thing here. Normal, finished. Now you can, with the naked eye, you can't see the difference. But when I now go to inspect geometry reflection, you will see there's a big change. Now the black line, they don't, they don't have this offset when they go from one surface to the next. So we are better now. We now have G1 continuity. So in order to reach the best quality, the G2 continuity, uh, again, I, again, I go into, hang on, what is that? Somebody, I think somebody gave me a message here. Uh, because my phone said cool at 244 that's just now <laughs> that's good uh, okay on um, so we want to do it even better we want to do g2 now I hope logically you can understand if I want to make it curvature continuous to something, there has to be something there already. But we first modeled the corner. We want to make it curvature continuous to the straight surfaces, but they're not there yet, right? So again, I'll try. But just try to go curvature continuity. It is asking me select two or more curve or edge chains to define the surface first direction. There is nothing there yet, right? So logically, the two straight or extruded surfaces have to be there before the corner. And if they're there already, then I can say, make it G2 continuous to that. So I'll cancel that. So what I want to have is I want to have these straight surfaces before. So I, I just drag them up here. That is possible. I'm lucky. So now if I go into the redefinition, they're there already. I could now say, make it curvature continuous. Let's try. Right hand click, and, and when I activate this, you have to keep the right hand click button down. Sorry, I should have said that before. So keep, take a note now. I'm just, I'm touching, I'm holding down the right hand mouse click down all the time. Pull it to curvature. And it says now, select two or more curve or edge chains to define the surface first direction. I don't even know what that means. But maybe, maybe it means to select this curve and this. Yeah. Is that good? Are we happy? Oh no, I don't know. Let's try curvature. Select one and two on this one. No, this behaves different. But actually, I don't. I don't. I don't want to do that. I. I don't want to change the chain. This is not what I wanted to do. Again, try and try again. So I have this curve. I want this to be curvature continuous. Basically, it doesn't work. I can't make that curvature continuous. Why? Well, the answer to that is I can't make it curvature continuous because these two lines, the ones that the corner lines that are sketched, they already are not curvature continuous. Right? Uh, so I can, I can never make this corner perfectly curvature continuous because the edges that I sketched before are already not perfect. Right? 
So basically, I can't do it with, with the sketch curves. So this is how we reach the next level. And that is um, curves that are not sketched, but drawn in space. Uh, so what I, what I do is I'll basically I'll start again with, with this corner, but not, com not completely new. Uh, I just delete the boundary blend and I will not use, I cannot use these curves, cannot use, they're not perfect enough. At, the, at their ends, they're not declared curvature continuous. They're pretty near to actual curvature continuous, but not good enough. So, uh, what you can't know is with a sketch, you can't do it, right? So instead, you can, you can use under model, you can use uh, the datum, you can use a curve through points. Actually, in three dimensional space, you can select a number of points to do that. Um, and I want to keep my center point. So, what I do now is I, I, will, I will go into these sketches. And now this seems rather brutal, but I will actually delete this curve. Now I know it's And uh, what, I, what I want to have though, is I want to have uh, this special middle point because I want, to control, I want to control how much my corner comes out. So I'm using the point on the left side of the menu. See, I remind you again, there's two points. There's this one and there's this one. And I'm using the left one because this one will be there outside of the sketch. I have, look, funnily enough, I still have these points where, uh, because these are reference points. But just the only thing that I will actually sketch in my sketch is the center point. And I, I don't even know what, what is the position. Ah, see, little problem here. I'm lost. It's I'm not sure. Can you actually see my, my video while I'm sharing the screen? I don't think so. Uh, but tell me later on. Okay, so, so now this sketch has only one point, and this is what I want because now I use, or I have to display the point, I use uh, the datum curve, curve through points. So I snatch. Uh, I don't want, well, maybe that works, so I click this one first, then this one, then this one. Okay, I have a curve, and the trick now is I will make that curve, curvature continuous, and it's asking me curvature continuous for what? Select this edge. Actually, the, the direction of that is, is wrong. This is because this little arrow, see? Pink, green, pink, green, this arrow is facing the wrong direction. So it is still curvature continuous. These two lines indicate that. Same thing here, right hand click, curvature continuous. And it's, 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 it is expecting me to say curvature continuous to what? Clicking on that. Now this curve is now curvature continuous. This, this is a very cool curve now. Again, you can't really see how it is different. It's just in the math. It's so slightly mathematically different. But again, I'm, I'm going into that sketch. I'm finding the sketch because all I want to have is this, this control point. So I'm deleting this. Uh, here I have all these conditions already. I'm creating a control point, putting my control dimension on it. Uh, I don't know. Is that five? Five looks good to me. And I do the same thing. I will do datum curve two point one two three. Curvature continuous to this edge. And again, it's doing the crazy thing. No problem. Just hit the arrow here. Curvature continuous to this. It's fine. So actually now this I see this curve looks not it looks nasty it kind of uh, flattened so I just change my dimension a little bit 
six. Yeah. Oh, maybe this is not bad. This looks good. This one looks good too. So now I'll try again. I will now do my boundary blend. I will do uh, bum, 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 direction one. And well, it's, it's suggesting to use the edge of the extrude. Actually, I want to have my original sketch. So I'll right hand click. It doesn't give me that. Maybe I uh, have to choose curve here. Hello. It doesn't see the curve anymore. <laughs> That's uh, well. Then maybe it just works with the edge. Just as well. so edge, edge. Direction number one. Choose this and that. Uh, and now comes the trick. Now I try to do this curvature continuum, and it immediately does it. You see how it changes. Lines. Cool, right? So now, even if it, well, it's still very, very good looking, right? But, uh, but it looks basically the same as before. So I merge them. I just merge them into one. And again, I want to see. I want to now see how my zebra. Zebra things are working. Um, inspect geometry, reflection. And look at that. Now the zebras, the lines, they just go in there super smoothly with no kinks, no breaks at all. So this is now a high quality G2 continuous transition between these three. Systems. I'm very happy. Now, what I'll do, I'll, I'll finish the whole thing for you. This is your assignment. So I'm giving it all away because that's the sort of person I am. So I'm going back to modeling. Uh, I, I choose quilt because it snatches the whole thing. I want to see my plane displays. What I will do now is I'll mirror it two times. So it's selected. I can mirror it. Hello, mirror. I will choose this surface. Yes, and I will select these two fills. I will merge them already. Bam! And now I select this and I mirror it again. And I will merge it already. You can tell this is already it. Right now, um, the only thing that is missing, of course, are the two flat surfaces. So I'll I'll show you two ways you could do it. One is just uh, extrude something uh, and then merge. So I'll just draw one single line that is thinking easy. One line uh, extrude. Two signs. Acting the pain merge. Yeah. Now for the for the back side, because we don't have a back side yet, I will actually use a different function which is called where is it? Editing, no, uh, it's under surface fill because now this is basically a flat surface uh, filled in between the edge. So I'm defining the edge. I do that, I'm making the sketch in the back surface. So I first have to select the drawing plane. It doesn't exist yet. So what I do is I define one and I will just give uh, this edge and this. So Plane that goes between these two edges. The plane is now there, and now 
uh, was my sketch. Ah, uh, and I do, I do I make the outline by just selecting the existing outline. Now that's kind of wicked project, but it's a loop. What I do is I'm trying to select the edges here. Ah, so no. Why is it always highlighting? I want to, I want to have an edge. Make the user edge loop. Ah, sorry. I, I need a trick for that. I need to do chain. That's a trick. Double. So I'm, I'm selecting this one. Then I'm selecting this one. And I don't want to have this one. I want to have it go all around. Sorry, I have the wrong point. I want to have, I go through the next one. Now it highlights the thing going all around. Here comes the trick. I say that. And it says, the endpoints of the chain are coincident. Do you convert it into a loop? Yes, this is what I want. This is also something. I wanted to have the loop all the way, but it doesn't let you select the edges. If you select the loop, you see the window here. If you want to do it with a loop, it doesn't work. So I do edge and then uh, two, two neighboring edges, go through next, next, until it shows what I want, which is the loop. Then I go accept, and then it says, well, it looks like a loop. Do you want a loop? I said, yes. So I close it. This is my, my fill surface. Complete. I still have to merge it though. This one and that one. Merge. Merge. Now I have designed my first iPad. Uh, of course, it's still surface model. If I want it to be a volume, I can use solidify again. Bam. Um, yeah, finished. This is your homework, your assignment. If you can uh, actually do that, of course, I'm expecting everybody to have a slightly different. You can do a phone instead, a small one, or a uh, iPod, whatever the smaller size is called, compact. No, that's not, that's not an Apple word. Whatever. I just hope that all of yours will be slightly different. Uh, do it each, everybody do it alone, of course. I can tell from just looking at your model tree, if you just copied and changed the values of something, I don't want that. I want you to go through the learning experience. And I, I trust, especially for Hasid, who likes car bodies, that is something that uh, he should enjoy quite a lot. Uh, maybe the others. Uh, and if I now go into render and I do perspective view, it even looks way cooler. Wow, look at how cool this looks. Oh, yeah, there you go. If I now use the reflection analysis, it will actually not, I will be not so happy. Um, because, uh, and I will realize that the back, the flat back bit and the curve bit are not perfectly, uh, they're not actually curvature continuous because I didn't manage to make uh, the curves that define the long stretched extruded surfaces. They are not curvature continuous to uh, the flat surface. Damn, but it is possible, of course. Now I realize that mistake. I would again change the logic of my overall modeling. I would, I would go back and uh, also use not a sketched curve, but a curve through points for these two curves. And uh, now I know it, but to me that is good, good enough. Now, if, if, you're, if you want to, you can do it better than I did it here, so that it's completely curvature continuous, but I'm telling you, as your assignment is good enough, as I did it here, just in case. Save, bam, iPad, go back. So I'll end the sharing. I think uh, that's it for today. I'm happy that it worked so well. I think next time I want to do a long lecture, they'll make me pay for it. Uh, okay, anyhow, I hope you liked it, right? 
Was that fun today? Was something different? And this is, um, yes. it, it, personally, I, I only learned that by doing. I, I didn't find any instructions when I started reform surfacing many years ago, around 20 years ago. Um, so basically, I condensed my, my personal learning experience from many years into, into the most effective uh, lesson that, will, that could get you started. That you, you, can, you can actually teach yourself to do car bodies, uh, but it will take you a long time. If you don't think, if you think a car body is something very simple, uh, but it's, there's the artistic aspect and then there's the technical aspect of that. But anyhow, in the IDE uh, assignment, we'll get a chance to at least do a rough sketch of, of body shells of your vehicle if, if you want to. Uh, 